Well, it's time to check in once again on our grain market activity and our livestock trade. And we are gonna go take a look at our markets in Chicago with a little extra help, where we have none other than Mr. Todd Bubba Horwitz joining us right now, live from the trading floor, the CME Group. Mr. Todd Bubba Horwitz of BubbaTrading.com. Hey, you're looking pretty spiffy today. So uh, kind, of an active, kind of an active week here. What's going on this morning? Drew, just a little bit. Good morning, Marlon. You know, we're having some action. We had a little bit of a sell-off yesterday. We're seeing a little bit of retracement back this morning. And I think, you know, I think that uh, corn looks great. And I think wheat looked terrific. My only issue remains with soybeans. You know, they can't stay over that 985 level. So, but overall, I think the, the whole grain space looks terrific. I, I'm a, definitely a buyer. And certainly, I like the, uh, you know, 355 to 360 in corn and, three, and, and 440 in wheat are great spots for me just to go ahead and step in and load up again. Because I think we're going to see a, a, a higher rally than next time we get through this and now the equity market are starting to break i think they'll even bring more new money into these markets and i think they're going to really start to take off so you're you're talking about the the big move uh, in the outside markets yesterday and and do you think that'll have as much influence here today or not uh, it may not be today, but it will be soon. I think what, what, we're, what you're seeing right now is the equities are rallying right now. They're up about, you know, the futures are up about three or four hundred. They were down limit overnight. Now they're up. But I think what's going to happen is as people pull out, as the interest rate market goes higher and as the tenure, which is going to go over three percent in the next couple of weeks, as that goes over three percent, money's going to come out of equities. And I think one of the main spots that people look to go to is into the grains. And I think that's what you're going to see. You're going to see that transformation over the next four to five weeks as the equity you to sell money will move into the grain markets pushing those prices higher and bring back some real trade back in there as well plus the fact we're moving into some other things that are going on around the world and i think that makes it a much more appetizing market and i think it does push mean for higher prices that's an excellent point. You and I have been talking about that since what, last uh, fall or late last summer, I believe, something about the, since the I was money a, since flow. Since I was a toddler. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, there is that. But let's take a look here at what's going on in the grain trade as it stands right now. We'll start with this corn market in Chicago right behind you there. Uh, March corn now two and three quarters higher at 361 and a half. Well, Todd, that's only one tick off of our high of the day now. We have July, two and three quarters higher at 377. That's on the high of the day. Another one is December, which is on its high of the day, three higher at 392 and a half. <clears throat> now, on the uh, soybean side of things here, we have the soybeans talking about dry weather in Argentina. Maybe rain a couple of weeks out, but boy, that's a long ways out there. And soybeans are firming up. March up 11 at 980 and three quarters. July up 10 and three quarters at 1002. Now, what about the wheat trade? Well, in Chicago, we have the March contract on the wheat. Uh, if we can roll over there, it is three and a half higher at 443 and three quarters, July three and a quarter higher. And in Kansas City right now, you have your March contract on the KC wheat trading four and three quarters higher. 466 and a half, July five higher at 496. So Todd, my question to you is, has the correction run its course in the wheat trade for the time being? Because the moisture once again missed the Southern Plains today. Oh, I, th I always thought they were going to go a lot higher, and I have, my opinion has not changed. I think we're right back to support, which is where I want to be a buyer anyways. I think 440 is a great area to step back in. I think we're going to now, next time up, I think we will take out that 460 and go higher. I, I, like, I'm looking for mid-fives in wheat before the year's over. So I think that we get a tremendous rally in the whole space. Again, my only concern remains with beans at 985. If they can't get over, I'd be, I'd be nervous. But corn and wheat, I think, look tremendous, and I, I want to be an owner. I think you've got great value owning them down here, I think your risk is very minimal based on what your possible reward is going to be. Is the wheat tied to the dollar? Well, I mean, they're supposed to be tied to the dollar, Marlon, but look, let's, let's look at a little history in the dollar. The dollar's on five-year lows, yet the commodities didn't rally. So the, what the, what the, I think what the commodities are, and what you and I talked about six months ago, is they understand that this is all manipulated dollars through the central banks, and it's not as important a play as it used to be because people are going to buy what they need, and it's, the markets are going to move. And that's, I think, what we're seeing, and the dollar is about ready to take off to the moon because the Fed will no longer be able to keep it down, and that's the only way they've been able to artificially suppress interest rates. So as the dollar starts to take off, I think it'll have no effect on the grains. I think that's an old, worn-out trade now because we've already kind of priced in a higher dollar. Just look at the prices of commodities across the board. None of them have rallied anywhere near what the dollar has fallen. Interesting stuff. We'll take a look at our livestock trade when we come back with Todd Bubba Horwitz. We'll be back in just a moment.
We're talking with Todd Bubba Horwitz of BubbaTrading.com. He's at the edge of a CME Group trading floor in Chicago right now, um, where we have a rally in the U.S. dollar this morning. Todd, I see the crude oil market is backing up a little bit, the energy markets. Usually that means our uh, diesel fuel markets or heating oil will be going weaker as well. We can take a look at where they now stand, uh, if we can pull that up. But uh, right now, the heating oil market down about 2.5 cents per gallon. And we have the March contract now under $2. It's at 199.6 per gallon. Is that noteworthy? Well, I think we're going lower. I, again, you know I'm not an oil fan anyways. I think this whole oil move in general was pushed up, first of all, because of OPEC and because of all the other outside manipulation, because we were, we were in backwardation, which just shows you that there was a more of a fear trade than an actual real trade or a fundamental trade. And now that we're starting to square back up, you start to see oil falling. I don't think, I think oil is, the high of the year, in my, as far as I'm concerned, is in in oil. I can only see it going lower from here. I think it goes much lower, again, as we work, as we work through time here, and especially if we start to get some more heavier selling in equities, that will also drag down the Price of oil. All right, uh, let's take a look here at what's going on in the uh, livestock trade. Let's go to live cattle right now. Uh, get your thoughts on the live cattle board. We have February down 44 at 125.68. This thing is as choppy as what the stocks have been. We have the April now down 70 at 124.78 after hitting a high earlier of 125.62. So we've been higher and lower today. We have the feeder cattle trade. If we look over there, the March now down 88 at 148.80. Gosh, last time we checked, I believe it was up there toward 150. So uh, now we're lower again. We have April down 64 at 149.88. So with all this choppiness going on in the cattle market, first of all, why are we seeing that type of market action? And when are we going to uh, start to settle down here? Well, you've had some pretty big moves, Marlon, over the last couple of days. Remember, we had right. uh, fat cattle was up limit on Thursday and feeders were up limit on Friday. And that's typically those are signs of a market making a temporary top. And then the temporary top creates this choppy volatility. I'm expecting a pretty good sell off here in fats down to basis uh, uh, basis April. I'm looking for about 121, 122, which, which I will want to step in and become a buyer there. I think that's a great opportunity. I think the feeders look for about 144, in which I want to be a buyer. I'm not really a bearish guy here. I'm looking for a spot. And I think this action, this very choppy, volatile action at tops of markets or at bottoms usually signifies that there's going to be a sell-off. And I think this is exactly what we're going to see. I think we're going to come in one day and they're going to be down limit. And that will be the time to step in and buy. Let's look at the lean hog trade right now. And on the big board, uh, we, last time we checked, we had triple digit losses on some contracts. And boy, they're adding to it now. February down 147. April down $2 now and 14 cents. That would put that price at 71.18. May down a buck and a half at 76.80. And now you have your June contract $1.70 lower at $81 even as uh, they are really taking a lot of premium out of that lean hog trade here today. Todd, I wish I had more time, but I uh, appreciate all the information information on the markets. Good to visit with you. Thanks, Marlon. Have a great day. You too. Thank you, uh, Todd. Bubba Horowitz of BubbaTrading.com in Chicago. Definite downward trend in the hog market hmm. today, as of now. Okay. Well, Cattle, you never know. Never every, know. Every other time, it's higher and lower. <laughs> we got much more trading to do as well. Thank you, Market Senator Marlon Boyd.